This content piece will explore the performance anomalies and command line options for Final Fantasy XV's benchmark, with later pieces going into detail on CPU and GPU benchmarks completely. Prior to committing to massive GPU and CPU benchmarks, though, we always pre-test the game to understand its performance behaviors and scaling across competing devices. For Final Fantasy XV, we've already detailed the FPS impact of benchmark duration, impact of graphics settings and resolution scaling, and we've used command line to automate and custom configure the benchmarks. We've also discovered poor frame time performance under certain benchmarking conditions, and we'll explore all of that in today's video. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Take and the View 71 enclosure. The View 71 is a full tower case that's capable of fitting three video cards in most configurations. It's also one of the better cooling cases in our recent case testing bench lineup. The View 71 has hinged tempered glass doors on either side that make it easy to open and show off, and it comes with at least one rain fan, though you can get the RGB version if you prefer. Learn more at the link in the description below. So we've done a lot of research on Final Fantasy XV's benchmark already. A few notes here before getting started. This is not technically a beta, but it is a pre-launch benchmark utility and there's no final game present. So all of this stuff will probably at least somewhat change by the time the game rolls out in about a month. Keep that in mind. That said, it still serves as a good benchmarking tool and we're excited to add it to the full suite once the game is launched completely because it's actually very easy to work with for what we need. So not a complete game, things will change. We are, however, using the latest drivers from NVIDIA, which are supposed to be tuned for this. AMD we contacted, they did release a new driver set today, the day that the game came out, but it doesn't include any optimizations for the Final Fantasy XV benchmark, and AMD noted to us that they plan on including those closer to the game's launch rather than the benchmark. So you'll have to keep an eye out for that as well. They're probably optimizing as we speak, using the benchmark to do so. Uh, this game also has a lot of graphic settings that we can see. They've been exposed, but we can't really change them easily right now. And we'll have more info on that as we go through this. For the original articles and everything that fed this video, you can go to gamersnexus.net where we'll be posting follow-ups as well. Uh, anytime there's a live benchmarking activity going on like this, we're pushing stuff as soon as we can, it hits the website first. So let's get started with the benchmarks for this one. And as always, you can check additional details in the article linked to the description below if you need test methodology information. This video will basically set the stage for the next two, which will be the GPU and the CPU benchmarks. We started out by testing for run-to-run -run variants, which would be used to help locate outliers and determine how many test passes we need to conduct per device. In this frame time plot, you can see that the first test pass illustrated on a GTX 1070 with the settings noted in the chart exhibits significantly more volatile frame times than what you'll see for the second pass. The frame-to-frame -frame interval occasionally slams into a wall during the first six-minute test pass, causing noticeable, visible stutters in gameplay. The second pass was noticeably more consistent in frame time interval, though it did still encounter one spiked frame time in excess of 250 milliseconds, bad enough to notice a stutter. This was over a six-minute period, and that said, there's one spike over 250 milliseconds as opposed to spikes over a full second for the first run indicated in blue and a 1200 millisecond frame time in the first run means that you're left staring at the same frame for a full 1.2 seconds in other words you're getting less than one fps for that 1.2 seconds technically speaking in that interval the average still hits 65 fps for both of these passes actually all three of them even in spite of the 1200 millisecond frame time, and that's because we're averaging nearly 30,000 frames of data. As a reminder, you'd need about a 16.667 millisecond frame time interval to achieve an effective 60 FPS. Run 3 exhibited similarly smooth behavior to Run 2, and we have now observed across six GPUs that the first run, particularly with the 1080p high settings, appears to have worse 1% and 0.1% lows than the subsequent runs. Next, we're moving on to graphics settings discussion. Reddit user RandomStranger454 detailed all the lower level settings options for the three presets in the game. The benchmark launcher only gives the ability to switch between presets of low, medium, and high, along with just a couple of resolutions. Knowing the lower level details tells us where Gameworks and other graphics options are enabled and disabled, theoretically, giving us a look at two things. One, a potentially closing relative performance gap between AMD and NVIDIA as lower graphics options are configured. 
as these disable GameWorks technology, and two, a look at future options for the full game. Let's start with the GameWorks options. The high preset is presently the only one that the GameWorks graphics options, as far as we know, are enabled in. And two of those options supposedly remain disabled for the benchmark utility at least sometimes. The Shadowworks library is probably disabled at present, as is the Voxel Accelerated Ambient Occlusion. That said, I'm using the words probably and likely and maybe here because the user who found those settings and stripped them out of the game's files did end up posting a screenshot later after the user had managed to enable the on-screen display for the benchmark and noticed that the on-screen display, which is not technically officially supported, did say that the uh, apparently disabled VXAO options were enabled in that test. So we're not fully clear on whether we believe the file they came from or whether we believe the on-screen display. If we believe the file, then they might be disabled, uh, but if we believe the display, then it looks like they're enabled at least for 1080p high. Either way, we previously detailed most of these graphic settings when they were unveiled back at GDC 2016. VXAO converts the screen space into voxels based upon geometric data, which reduces the complexity present from raw triangles and primitives. VXAO then runs a cone tracing pass for the shadowing computation, and the result is that ambient occlusion can theoretically be calculated more accurately, demonstrated with NVIDIA's tank asset in this example. So, in the example on the screen, the blue voxels are partially occluded, and the red voxels are completely covered by the volume of geometry. Cone tracing draws the lines from each point to calculate how much occlusion exists from the respective points traced into the hemisphere around that point. To learn more about this, click our old article linked below. VXAO does require Maxwell architecture and up, including Pascal and, I guess, the Titan V, if you wanted to count that. What we're not sure about is how well VXAO will work on AMD, if it works at all. And as for the rest of the GameWorks options, those are from what we understand, all enabled, just with VXAO and the shadow libraries being a big question mark right now. Let's pull some quick data out of our upcoming GPU benchmark. This will look at relative performance scaling between the RX 580 8GB and GTX 1060 6GB cards while switching between medium and high settings. The idea is to see if relative scaling worsens with higher settings, and that's where NVIDIA will theoretically have more optimization. Keep in mind that more than just game work settings change between medium and high here, so it's not perfectly isolated as a test, but the game work settings are most likely to be drivers in performance deltas, particularly for AMD. And it's for obvious reason. AMD probably hasn't had as much access to the game, and they certainly haven't had as much time optimizing for their competitors' game work solutions, so it makes sense. In the chart, the GTX 1066 GB card is baseline, marked at 100% performance. The GTX 1070, under both medium and high settings, maintains 137% of the GTX 1060's performance. It is almost equal for both presets, at 137 for both medium and high. The RX 580 maintains 60% of the GTX 1060's performance when using high settings, or 66% of the GTX 1060's performance when using medium settings. AMD is regaining ground at medium settings, which means that at least one of the settings enabled under high is more taxing for the AMD card than it is for the competing NVIDIA card. This comes down to shader level optimization and or architectural level differences, where shader level optimization would also account for driver and library differences involving GameWorks. We don't have enough information yet to firmly conclude whether GameWorks is the driving reason for that six percentage point delta in performance increase as we move to medium settings with the RX 580 card, but it's a likely contributor as it has been in the past, and history dictates here that NVIDIA's GameWorks packages, libraries, often use things like tessellation, which NVIDIA's cards happen to be pretty good at, and AMD does struggle a bit with the heavier tessellation without some optimization on AMD's side or on the user's side. There are settings in AMD's drivers that you can go through to help with this factor by lowering the amount of tessellation. One thing that we've noticed that we haven't yet published is that the uh, tessellation setting for terrain has a particularly heavy impact on some of the AMD cards that tend to struggle more with geometric complexity, drawing a lot of triangles at once, and uh, the amount of tessellation for the train in this game is enough to bring those cards down a couple of ranks. You can account for this somewhat by going through your AMD driver settings, 
but this isn't something that we've tested for this piece because it's not really the point of this piece. Moving on to CPU testing now, we ran command line benchmarks using the num threads and num async threads commands, checking for performance disparities on our stock R7-1700 platform and our stock i7-8700K platform. Our thanks to Peerless Girl of the GN Patreon backer Discord for helping troubleshoot these commands. If you want to join us next time we talk about a new game coming out and benchmarking it, you can go to the link below, patreon.com slash gamersnexus. So the goal here was to determine if either command impacts Intel or AMD differently, not to match the CPUs head to head. That'll come later. And to get you up to speed, if you haven't been following this game, basically you're able to run command line options for the game. So you can set flags for the EXE when you launch it. And this has been particularly helpful in building the tests that we've been building. Some of those flags include a num threads and an async threads setting. So you can set num threads equal to say eight, maybe half of your threads on an R7-1700. The theory here, and there's not really any documentation on how these work officially, is that setting it to num threads eight would reduce the number of threads that the game is going to load when it's handling all the game data. So this is something we tested here. Async threads were not really positive if it's even implemented yet or if it works at all. Uh, we tried it, we'll talk about that in a bit though. First of all, here's the utilization difference on the R7-1700. This chart shows all of those tests at once. We're seeing the highest utilization when set to 16 threads with baseline, meaning no flag at all in command line, also roughly equating num threads equals 16. It is a 16 thread CPU. Having it to eight threads noticeably reduces CPU utilization, so the function appears to be working at least somewhat. Going to four threads further reduces utilization, aside from one spike toward the end of the test. Ultimately though, it comes down to FPS. Although in ad hoc tests, we did collect data that seemed to indicate a baseline FPS using a 1080 Ti of about 131 FPS average. Using num threads equals four or eight gave us 135 FPS average, which is just outside of acceptable margins of test variance. Num threads equals 16 didn't seem to show uplift outside of error, and that's probably because it's the same thing as baseline. This appears to be a GPU limitation, and so we get into a problem where to really show a difference with these settings, if they do indeed work, and it seems like they might, we start entering realm of academic study. It's not really something you necessarily do, because what we have here is a GTX 1080 Ti at 1080p with medium settings, not even high, uh, and we're still plotting about 94% utilization, apparently, on the GPU with occasional spikes to 97. So we're basically at full load on the GPU, the CPU is not really there yet, and it's, it's hard to say how much of that, uh, that limited performance disparity between the different number threads flags comes from GPU limitations, but it's reasonable to assume at least some of it does. This is something we'll be able to explore in greater depth with our uh, CPU benchmark and our GPU benchmark, which are coming up separately. For now, however, we can assume that some of the limited difference here comes from GPU limitations. And to that extent, to really show differences, you enter territory where you've got two options. You drop the resolution to something no one will ever play with, like 480p and low settings, and eliminate the GPU bottleneck. That would certainly show a difference, but it's, it's entirely academic at that point. So it's not at all realistic. Still interesting though. Uh, the other option is to use a low end, really low end CPU, like a G4560 or maybe an R3 or an old FX four core or something like that. Maybe you'll start seeing differences there, but that's not something we're doing for today with this test. As for num async threads, we're not really sure if that feature is working right now. So we tried it and we're also not sure how it's supposed to work. There's no official documentation on it. And uh, we tried num async threads equals 16, equals eight and equals four and saw about the same performance across all of them. It's not even worth generating a chart for. It's possible that it's not enabled right now. It doesn't like the CPU maybe, or that we just don't know how to use it properly, what number to type or the order of where to type it, things like that. So if you have an idea on using this command, you've actually seen a difference from using it, please let us know below and give us some more information so that we can look into it for you. But for now, not really clear on if it does anything or works, at least on the 1700. We also ran all this testing on the 8700K, same problem there, except to a bigger degree, all the numbers were the same because the 1080 Ti is bottlenecking. And yes, we can eliminate that bottleneck. Uh, no, it is not realistic. So it exits real user scenarios. It's all academic. 
we're going to skip it for now. The next part is standard deviation and test time. Standard deviation is another aspect of our data analysis for benchmarks. And we just posted a video about test duration and the minimum requirements for how long a test should be. So check that out if you haven't already. At time of filming this, we've only completed half of our NVIDIA and a couple of our AMD cards because we were waiting for AMD to push today's driver revision prior to testing, which they just did. And using our still limited data set, starting with 1080p high, we can see that standard deviation is relatively consistent across four runs, though exhibited greater variance in our GTX 1080 test than the others. We may rerun the GTX 1080 as a result of its wider deviation from the norm. The RX 580 has the least deviation, but this is also because it has the lowest frame rate with these settings. It's struggling at 1080p high, something we'll talk about in our GPU benchmark. Much of this has to do with tessellation. At 1080p medium, with the GameWorks settings mostly disabled or entirely disabled and tessellation presumably turned down through the settings, we're observing tighter results overall, with standard deviation on average FPS below one point for the three presently tested devices, or below 1.5 FPS for the 1% and 0.1% low values. The RX 580 was also consistent in this testing, and this gives us a reasonable margin for error of plus or minus 1 to 3 FPS, depending on which card we're talking about. We'll further refine this data prior to our GPU benchmark publication and talk about it more there. For test durations, we found that the full 6-minute benchmark produces roughly equivalent results to a 60-second pass or even a 30-second pass with GPU testing, with relative scalability cross-vendor also scaling equivalently between 6 minutes and 30 or 60 seconds. This feeds back into our video published just a couple days ago at this point, where we talked about the benchmark duration requirements and how what you're really looking for generally is relative performance versus vendor A and B. As long as that scaling is the same, you're good to go. For something like this though, this is a specific game benchmark, so we care more about absolute performance because people watching our upcoming benchmarks want to know if their card can play or what card they should buy to play the game at specific settings. So we'll be looking at it more from an absolute FPS standpoint. However, the absolute FPS and the relative FPS, 6 minutes versus 30 seconds, even 60 seconds, 90 seconds, all the way down the line, for the most part, it's about the same with GPU bound testing. CPU bound testing is a different story. We're still studying that and it looks like we're going to be doing a longer duration test uh, with a different amount of passes for our CPU benchmarks because when testing CPUs in this game, uh, there are really only a couple spots in the game where the CPU is loaded heavily. The rest of it's very GPU intensive, so you have to pinpoint those spots and run the benchmark for that specific location to really bind the CPU. And one final thing here, as we finished this video, we went back to add in this audio clip because we discovered that with CPU testing on the AMD R7 1700 CPU under both stock and overclock settings, we were observing a performance uplift once again by disabling SMT. So this kind of feeds back into the number threads thing being eight, giving you better performance. We'll talk about this more in the CPU benchmark fully. It's not a huge uplift. It's not like it's a 2x gain, but we're gaining eight FPS on top of 150 in one of the benchmarks to give you an idea. It's a couple percent. And that's something we'll talk about more soon. We also made some very interesting discoveries between AMD and Nvidia graphics card scaling performance under very specific benchmark conditions that we will also reveal in our upcoming GPU benchmark, so make sure you subscribe for that. And speaking of all that, CPU benchmarks of course are upcoming as our GPU benchmarks. Subscribe for those if you haven't already so you can catch them as they go live. Should be relatively soon, maybe even today or within the next 12 or so hours anyway, we'll see. But uh, subscribe from that. You go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or join the Patreon Discord where we were talking with everyone about the benchmarking process as it was going on behind the scenes. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.